on behalf of Drs. Andre and Jenny, we want to welcome you to Faith Church Live today. We're so excited to have you with us. And I know God has such a divine appointment for every single one of you that's connecting. So whether you're watching on DSTV 341, Sky 590, on Faith Now, or you are in the house, you are ready for a treat. Jenny? I am ready for a treat. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord today. You know what? It's cold outside, but people have decided to regard the warm blackness and bring them along with and come to church to say, to praise Jesus and to say, listen, whatever the circumstance is, I'm putting my faith and trust in Jesus alone because he's the one that, he's the author and the finisher of my faith. Therefore, I'm going to trust and believe in him. So if you're watching at home, be expected and ready and set yourself up to receive everything that God has for you today and be ready to partake of what the word is going to be today. So be ready and expect him because we are in the house of the Lord. Well, we need to be just like our father in the faith, Abraham, how he disregarded every single thing, but he knew he who called him, he who promised is faithful. And right here and right now, where you are, he who called you, he who actually began your entire existence is here to meet with you. He's here to empower you. He's here for, and for you to encounter the fullness of who he is. So without further ado, let's just lift our hands where you are. Yep. Make sure you are expectant. You can bump the person next to you if you see that they're not so expectant but get ready for an encounter faith band take it away church are you ready to praise jesus are you ready to praise jesus hallelujah hallelujah come on lift your hands and say glory to you jesus glory Put your hands together. There is no shadow that has ever overcome you light. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle.
Oh! 
welcome to the house of the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord on behalf of Dr. Andre and Pastor Jenny. What an awesome time for us to be here. What a great time to be in the presence of the Most High. And it's such an honor and privilege for all of you joining us online as well, for you in the house as well. It is such an honor and a privilege to worship God with each and every single one of you. I want you to take a few seconds right now, and I want you to greet the person next to you, greet the person behind you, welcome them to church. I see people already hugging, shake hands, hug, do what you need to do. And it's gonna be a great time right here in the prayer zone. You may take your seats immediately afterwards. It is such an honor for me to be in this house. It is such an honor for me to be joining each and every single one of you online. And I want to share a few quick church announcements so you guys know what's going on. Because there's some important information that you need right here in the house of the Lord. So I want you guys to pay attention. Even on the screens, you'll have it there. Rock Solid Faith continues every Wednesday. So we're we'll meeting Rock Solid Faith. So if you already have been participating or being part of the first or second intake, Rock Solid Faith will continue this Wednesday as well. Don't forget to join us for midday prayer at 12 midday every Tuesday all the way to Friday. We are praying up a storm. A church that prays together, stays together, and grows together in Jesus' name. Amen. And then one exciting piece of news, a personal favorite of mine. For those of you who still need to do DNA, so what's DNA? DNA is you catching the heart of this house. It's what God is doing right here at Faith Church and how you can be a part of it. That's what DNA is, figuring out what the church is about. Also getting an opportunity to find out what your gifts and where you could plug in and serve in the house of the Lord. Don't forget, you can take down our number, our WhatsApp number. The number will be on the screen in a few seconds. And you can WhatsApp us for any information that you need that is church-related. So you want to find out, oh, when is DNA? You didn't hear it. Maybe you missed it. When is DNA? What's rock-solid faith? What's happening with youth and young adults? All those kind of things. Baby dedication, which I'll talk to about in a few seconds. You can WhatsApp us on that number on the screen right now, and then you can get all that information. So make sure you send us a WhatsApp with your name and surname, and then the team will save your number and add you to the broadcast list of the church. Amen? Now, if you want to grow in the faith, and it's not just a Sunday thing, join a small group. Be a part of the small groups. The small groups have been growing as is. But also, you could start a small group. Anyone here interested in starting a small group? Or being in a small group? Want to start a small group? Take that number on the screen as well. Send a WhatsApp message and say, hey, listen, I'd like to start a small group. I'd like to join a small group. I'm in this area. They'll connect you to people who are running small groups currently. One more announcement. This is very exciting for the men. Are there any men in the house? Yeah, I know you guys got that low thing, so it's not as loud. So are there any men in the house? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be having a men's breakfast on the 12th of August so all the men can get together. The breakfast is going to be an exciting time. If you want to find out more or want to register, please go under the Raker seating as you come in. There's some clipboards there where you can sign up and be a part of the men's breakfast. Please understand when we say men, we define it by the original biological meaning of men. Amen? Okay, amen? We are not on any LGTV agenda. I said LGTV, amen? And then last but not least, which is an awesome announcement as well, if there are any new parents in the house, we're having our baby dedication on the 19th of August as well. So you can WhatsApp us to get more information or go to the info desk to get more information about the baby dedication taking place on the 19th of August as well. So I'm being signaled from everywhere. I can't even hear what they're saying. Is it on the screen? Is it 13th? I was told 19th. Is it the 13th? Okay, then I guess it's the 13th of August. Thank you, Bernice Ma. You are the best communicator. Gotta love. See, you love mothers in the house. They know how to communicate properly. You guys aren't mothers yet. Mothers know how to hand signal sons. <laughs> we understand. So 13th of August, baby dedication. 
and you can dedicate your, your precious bundle of joy. Amen? I'm going to ask Dean and Ronia, Uncle Dean and Ronia to come join me on stage because I want us to share what Faith Cares and Faith Missions have been up to and what we're going to be talking about, especially this past week they've been out. And it's an exciting time in what we're doing as a ministry in its totality. So welcome Dean and Ronia on, this, on the platform. Ah, guys, you can do better than that. Okay, I'm going to try to squeeze in here just between the two of you while the donut takes us around. Uncle Dean, Ronia, welcome. It's great to be here. We have you guys here. So let's quickly talk, what has Faith Cares been up to for the past while? You know, so we can get a feedback of what's been going on the past couple of months. Uncle Dean, I'm going to jump to you first. What's been going on with Faith Cares and missions, especially in the past couple of months? You know, just giving some highlights before we talk about last week. Sure. All right. Um, well, the first thing at the beginning of the year, we do a school project from Faith Cares. So we, uh, we take out stationery. So we did that in the Tsitsikama area. And then another project that we do is um, uh, lanterns. So we went into the uh, Utenake area, uh, Burgersdorp, where we went and gave lanterns to people and ministered to people. Um, and now this recent one which we'll talk about, we went to hand out ponchos in, but yeah, and what part of the missions would you like to hear about? <laughs> well, well, before you go there, lanterns, Ronia, I, I, I saw a testimony on your social media page about a young lady who'd received a lantern, I think in Utenake, and she's in Bible school that side. Tell us a bit more about that. Okay, so the whole idea of the solar lanterns was because of load shedding and how it really affects people's lives. So we thought that, okay, if we do give them the solar lantern, this will help them to, you know, get to do what they want to do before um, the next stage of load shedding kicks in, as we know how it goes. So, yes, that specific lady, she's a Bible school student, and the lantern has obviously helped her now to study at night and also to be more effective with the task that she needs to do as a young lady. So, obviously, it's nice and easy. You leave it in the sun, it gets charged up. By the time you get back from work, ready to cook in your kitchen, ready to study with the solar lantern. So that has touched a lot of lives, yes. Sure, now that's awesome. Now can you imagine the impact that has considering matric exams are coming up and how many young people are gonna be able to write their exams and study effectively because of those solar lanterns. Now let's quickly bring it into this week. You guys went out this past week and you went out to? Somerset East, Cook House and Bedford. And what happened out there? So that was our winter project. So we handed out nice fleece hoodies at different schools. And then also to the community in Cook House, people that are really in need living on the streets. We also bless them. But most importantly, before we even give anyone anything, we make sure that we minister to them. And also if there's any prayer requests needed or if they are really trusting God for something, but most importantly, giving them Jesus before we give them a lantern, a food parcel, something to wear. But it's just to make sure that, listen, guys, we're not just giving you something, but we're also giving you Jesus, who at the end of the day can give you more than what we can personally give you. Yeah. Uncle Dean, anything to add on there? What some of the experiences and the encounters you guys had out in Cook House and in those other areas? Well, I think the thing that um, really sad me when I was in Cook House was the fact that those people that we gave to, a lot of them don't even have electricity. So the fact that we have to bring a, bro- a warm poncho, yes, we gave them Jesus, and they were, I mean, the, the response was overwhelming, um, the people that gathered us the Lord. But just then to have to give them that warm poncho, I mean, if you don't have even electricity or something to keep you warm, that poncho makes all the difference. Um, and then even when we were at the old age home in... Um, uh, Somerset East. I mean, just the receptivity of the of the of the elderly people, and just hearing the stories um, of what they've been life experiences. Um, but then again, just they were so happy. I just remember the one lady when we gave her that punch, she started dancing up and down. So it was just so amazing to see. She was sitting in the sun trying to keep warm. So just the fact that we bought that punch, and it was cold there. Let tell me, it was cold there in Somerset East. So it was just amazing. Yeah, that's incredible. Now, I've felt some of those ponchos. I know they are very warm. I've felt some of those. So, family, that's what we are a part of. You know what I mean? That's what we're doing. We're reaching out to communities, to people. And these are just some of the stories of what Faith Cares has been doing. But I know it's not just Faith Cares. It's missions. We're going out. We're witnessing to people. And I know that we've even got an upcoming trip. Tell us a bit more about this trip. And can people still be a part of this missions trip that's coming? 
Yes, so you can definitely be a part of it. We still have space for you. If not, we will squeeze you in, I promise. But our trip starts next week, Sunday, mm -hmm. and then we'll come back the 11th. So we leave the 6th. If you do want to join the trip, please see myself or Dean um, after the service, and we'll gladly add you to the list. Come on, so that's what you got to do. You got to go out and preach the gospel, reach the people. Because the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Uncle Dean. Thank you, Ronia. Worship team, come on, let's get ready. We're going to praise the Lord after that. Because it's so exciting. I know that's a bit of a chilly, windy day in East London. So some of you need to, you know, warm up with some dancing and some movement and some shaking. Are you guys ready to praise the Lord? You guys don't look like you're ready to praise the Lord. Because you're still sitting down. Ah, there we go. One person getting up slowly. There we go. Feel like an auction. Come on, come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's praise the King. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the name above every name. The name of Jesus.
Do not forget what you just sang. Breakthrough. Okay, this is about breakthrough. I'm going to ask you, you know what time of the morning it is. Please get your Bibles out. And I want to see, I'm a bit curious. Show me if you have a paper Bible here. Please lift it up. So if you're old school and you have paper and it's, well, it's soft, soft cover or hard cover or fancy leather cover. Okay. Now, those of you who have electronic Bibles, lift that up, okay? So hopefully each of you have a Bible in hand. I would like you please to turn to Galatians 6 verse 9. Okay, quickly get there. Galatians 6 verse 9. I don't want to waste time, so I'm there already. I came prepared. (laughs) Galatians 6 verse 9. And if you don't pay attention, this might be over before you actually got it. (laughs) But I know you're smart. You are going to get this. It is a verse that is quite familiar. If you're part of this family of believers, then you actually already know this verse. And uh, we welcome our viewers as well. Thank you for joining us. This morning is your morning, okay? Galatians 6 verse 9. I'm just quickly going to read from the NIV. I might hop over to the Amplified as well. But Galatians 6 verse 9 reads, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. Do not grow weary in doing what is good, some translations will say, in what is right, because in due season, I think the King James says that, um, yeah, if, if, if we can hold on, there is a harvest that is promised. Okay, the NIV, again, let us not become weary in doing good, for in the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Okay, what I would like to share with you this morning, it is a verse that most of us are familiar with. Okay, the family here, most of you know my family. So you know in my household, most of the people play squash. If you're a viewer, you maybe don't know me that well yet, but most of the boys in my house play squash. Squash is a a ball game with a racket, a small little rubber ball that gets very hot and moves very, very fast. And I was talking to one of my kids this week, and I said, just explain to mommy, because there's, there's a lot that happens in a squash game. Now, if you know squash, it is fast, you need energy, you need to be fit, and there's, there's, there's a certain level of skill that is required in order to keep that little ball warm and keep going on the court. But I asked my one child, explain to mommy, what is this, you know, you hear all this lingo when they talk. In squash, now apart from all the drills that you do, your personal fitness, maybe a um, little bit check your eating habits, and hopefully you have a degree of a talent as well. But there's one specific training exercise that squash players do that they call ghosting. It's a bit weird because they do it by yourself without a ball. So you are on the court, racket in hand, solitary, by yourself. And as you practice by yourself, you kind of, in your mind's eye, you imagine certain shots. I'm looking at my kids. I hope mommy's not saying this right now, but this is now how I understand the game. Well, ghosting, practicing. So you have a racket, you buy yourself, it looks bizarre. This single person with a racket, no ball, looking at the wall and doing all these moves. So uh, we were busy driving and I said to Raphael, please just tell me, just in your words, what, what's this ghosting thing about? And I'm actually gonna read what he said because I also said to him, okay, write it down. Here's my phone, quickly tap, tap, tap while I'm driving. And he said, with ghosting, okay, you are now imagining, you are rehearsing shots that you play and possible outcomes of where the ball will come. So if you hit against this wall, this could possibly happen. If it hits in the corner, this will happen. If you're at the bottom of the side, if you love at the back, there are potential outcomes depending on where the ball is placed. So this was Raphael's words. Okay, so ghosting is the correct shaping and positioning of shots. And immediately my faith antenna shot up. 
I think it should for you as well. This has got everything to do with the faith walk. How do you position yourself? I'm quickly, I'm going to tie it together, reflecting back at our verse, Galatians 6 verse 9. Do not become weary in doing good. There's an instruction. For in due season, if you, if you, if you, if you don't faint, if you don't stop, you will reap a harvest. So you see what happens with ghosting, this one specific exercise that squash players do, is that you keep on rehearsing. If this happens, then I'm gonna do this. Because when you play that game, it is a fast-paced game. You have a split second to make a decision on how you are going to connect, connect your racket with that ball. And that is why, bringing it to what we are doing here now, in this context, we are speaking about finance, about giving. But pretty much, it is a faith principle that you can apply across all the disciplines in your faith walk. So what am I trying to say? As you keep on doing what is right, what is, what is the right stuff? Okay, now I'm talking about giving, my offerings, my tithe, that I'm obedient to my God to give, giving money to the poor, going visiting somebody, in doing the right things, you are building faith muscle. You are building a routine in your faith walk. Okay, we're talking now, it's just in this example, finance, but it goes across the board. So every time, and if you're part of this family, you will know whenever we get together, one of the many things we do is that we remind you, what does the Word of God say about finances? What is your role? What is the possible outcome that you can expect if you obey? Okay? And I saw this to be true in the natural, in a sport. Any sport people here? Hands up, especially if you're in a ball sport. Okay, then you will understand the discipline, the practice. Whether you are tired, whether regardless of anything, you keep on doing the right thing. You sitting here listening to this, that's doing the right thing. Obeying your heavenly Father when you bring your tithe, when you bring your offering, that is doing the right thing. In doing so, you are building strong faith muscle. So think about the squash game. If you're in that split second and you have to make a decision, you rely on muscle memory. You rely on your fitness. You rely on what is trained. trained. And that is exactly the same for you and I in our faith walk as well. You keep on training the muscle. And when the test comes, when the trial comes, when the temptations come, you kind of have uh, a default setting to fall back onto because of all the training that you've done. Your faith muscles already know, oh, if I do this, this is the faith outcome, okay? And that is why we do this. We remind you each time we get together about God, His principles, His faithfulness. I'm gonna close with a personal testimony quickly. Pastor Nile, sorry, I forgot to mention this when I told you what I was doing this morning. But the reason why this, well, one of the reasons this is important to me is because I know that it's true. Of course, I take the word of God as truth, as gospel. But I can remember as a little girl, dad, I don't know if my daddy's watching this morning. I remembered sometimes being bored or distracted in church. And my dad had in his Bible, it was yellow, if I'm correct, a yellow printed card, kind of like a tract. 70s and 80s were quite the the era of tracts. And that little yellow card had scriptures on giving and on tithing. I was pr privileged to grow up in a church where that was taught. Now, we had a pastor that once said, um, ducks quack, Christians tithe. Okay, that's what I grew up with. It wasn't, it wasn't something to be contested. So being bored, maybe in church or distracted, playing with my daddy's Bible, I would often read this yellow card with all the Bible scriptures concerning giving. Do you know what that did for me? I didn't grow up with any distrust 
or disbelief towards giving. It was part of my faith muscle. And then when I got to the place where I could make the decision for myself, okay, here's a confession. I'm of the caliber that I still remember what a blue, ten, a blue two rand note looks like. Uncle Greg, a purple five rand note. Okay, I remember I was nine years old. I gave my everything. It was a two rand note. And I saw the word of God in action. I saw him perform his word. I wasn't twisting his rubber arm. I was simply obeying an instruction. So as I grew up as a young child, I've seen it. This principle works. When your faith muscle is built, when the test comes, you've got the knowledge, you've got the experience, you've got the trust because you know that he is true to his word. So that is what we are going to do this morning, each one of us. I strongly encourage you, build that faith muscle. Make a decision to trust and to obey. So you know if you are family here, we come to the altar, we present our tithes and our offerings. You also know there are special ladies in the aisles. We uh, offer the debit card facility if you want to use your savings card and you want to obey your father that way, that is what we are going to do together. I know that our, our family and uh, friends watching whatever electronic media you're watching from, details are on your screen. You can be part of this. You can participate and you can obey. Okay, this is part of our worship family. This is part of our obedience. And as you do that, your faith muscle grows stronger you lock into muscle memory, into faith muscle. You lock that knowledge. And when the time comes, it's there to pull it out and to use it. Amen. Okay, so let's do it. Let's do it. Please come to the front. Uh, those who want to use the card facilities, do that. This is part of our worship. We are going to slip back into worship. Remember, what did we sing before, we got, before I got here? Breakthrough. This is your morning, and you are here for a reason. And we thank God for you. Let me quickly pray. Father, I thank you that you are true to your word. I thank you that you are not a man that you should lie. Jesus, thank you for the full price that was paid. We believe your word is true. Holy Spirit, thank you. You make us brave. We choose to obey. We choose to do. And we give you praise and glory. Thank you that I am blessed so I can be a blessing. Use me, Lord. Receive my gift. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come, family. Come join me. And let's continue with our worship. Amen. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name Every stronghold shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all of anxiety.
us in the darkness of every enemy. Jesus, for my family, I'll speak the holy name, Jesus.
Jesus. 
Lift your hands here this morning. Begin to bless the Lord. Come on out of your mouth this morning, everybody that's here in the dome and watching online. Let us begin to lift our voice and begin to bless Him, the name above every name. King Jesus, we exalt you. We lift you on high. You have no rival. You have no equal. Your name is wonderful. Your name is full of power, full of majesty. Oh, we worship you and adore you today. We exalt your wonderful name. Thank you for your mighty presence that's moving throughout this venue this morning. Oh, we worship you. We adore you. We glorify you. Our hearts are set upon you this morning. Our love is set upon you. Oh, we bless you with everything in our hearts this morning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. David said, I'll bless the Lord seven times a day. And then he said, that's not enough. I will bless the Lord at all times. And His praise, it will always be in my mouth. Father, we love you. Jesus, we exalt you. We declare that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. There is nobody like you. Oh, we worship you. And we offer unto you all the praise, all of the glory, all of the honor. Let your healing power begin to flow right now, I pray. Let the waters be stirred this morning. Let this morning be a morning of encounters. Oh, let a fresh touch from heaven come. We worship and adore you. Come on, let deep cry out unto deep this morning. Let a new hunger come upon you. Let a fresh zeal begin to operate on the inside of you. Pour out your love this morning to the Most High. Praise His name. Praise His wonderful name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless His holy name forever and ever. Oh, what a wonderful God you are. Your voice is mighty. Your voice is full of majesty. Your voice is upon the waters. Not only is it upon the waters, but it is the sound of many waters. Your voice is so mighty that it splits the cedar in Lebanon. It's so mighty and full of power that it causes the deer to give birth. Your voice, I pray that it would be heard today in this place, that every single one of your children that are here this morning and watching online, they'd begin to hear the voice of God. That the sheep would know His voice and the strangers they would not follow. Thank you that we will hear a voice behind us saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Whether to the left or to the right. We praise you this morning. Our hearts are expecting for an encounter that changes our lives forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we praise you. In the name of Jesus. Hey. Hey, in the name. The name. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, shout his name right where you are. Just say Jesus. Jesus. Be glorified this morning, I pray, Lord. Be glorified. Be exalted. Thank you that the encounters that are happening even right now will continue and even increase in Jesus' name. We love you this morning. Our love is set upon you. If you would, right where you are, just make a decision in your heart. Lord, I've set my love upon you this morning. Being in church this morning in these types of conditions is already an indication that you're serious about God. But just say it from your own heart right now. I set my love upon you, Lord. I set my love upon you this morning. I set my mind, my heart, everything, I set it upon you this morning. Let every voice that seeks to distract me be silenced this morning. Let all that seeks to come and take me off of the track of the path of righteousness be silenced today. I set my love upon you this morning. I take my eyes and I fix them on you. In the name of Jesus, let all that seeks to distract me be silenced. Let my heart be still this morning and know that you are still God. That you are well able. That you are full of might and full of power. That your name still reigns supreme amidst the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. And if you're here this morning, let your amen be the loudest. Yeah. Come on, worship band. Can we, give our, can we give our worship band some love this morning? Great job. Hallelujah. Come on, give them some love. They ushered us into the presence of God. We honor them. And I'm so glad that you're in church. Before you take your seat, if you could, just look at the person next to you and just give them a high five or find two or three people. Give them a high five. And then you may take your seat this morning. What a privilege I have this morning to minister the word of the Lord to my favorite people upon the face of the earth. Amen. You know, I'll be clear this morning. And um, some of my favorite days to minister the word of the Lord are on days like this. When the weather is horrible. Where the church is not as full as it normally is. Because it lets me know today that I'm preaching to a room full of people that truly love God that there's no conditions that the natural could throw at them that will prevent them from coming and being in the house of God. So I don't even have to tell you this morning to get hungry. The fact that you're in church this morning is an indication to me that you're here, that you're ready to receive. And we've seen the, the, the most powerful moves of God when, you know, it's, there's a few people in the house of God. But all that matters to me this morning is that you're here this morning in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? So I'll tell you right from the beginning, I'm not discouraged by any empty seats. I'm encouraged by the seats that are filled because you're here in the house of God. Can you say a loud amen? If you would, just lift up your voice and bless the Lord for the next 30 seconds. I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, right where you are, lift your hands to Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. We bless you this morning, precious Jesus. We love you. We're committed to following you all of our days. We will walk with you. Through, even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil. Oh, we're so grateful. We bless you today, this morning. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And the Bible says in Psalm 103, forget not all of His benefits. I bless you this morning with all of my heart, with all that is within me. I will bless the Lord in Jesus' name. Can you say aloud, amen? amen. You know, Psalm 103 is an interesting um, psalm and I want to just say something to you this morning we're going to get right into the word of God and we're going to flow with the Holy Ghost this morning you know what an interesting morning to be in the house of God with the current situations and circumstances and conditions in Buffalo City yet you are here in the house of God I mean you can see the roof is trying to come off things are falling apart signboards are off of the road and trees are broken down some of you had to do interesting things just to get to the house of God but I thank God that you're here and God's going to touch you this morning by his mighty word and the person that you came here today is not going to be the same person that's leaving in the name of Jesus. Do you believe it? Yeah. Come on, who says I'm leaving with a word from heaven? Come on, let me see you here today. 
I don't want to take you down a rabbit track this morning, but I find it interesting in Psalm chapter 103. Don't turn there, but I'll, I'll read it to you. In Psalm 103, it says something very interesting. And I quoted the first segment to you this morning. Psalm chapter one, or, or the 103rd charm, uh, Psalm, rather charm. The 103rd Psalm, it says this. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul. But it doesn't stop there. It says, and forget not all of his what? His benefits. I want you to know something this morning, that there are benefits for serving God. That there are rewards connected to people when they will serve God with their lives. When they will bless him, when they will stay committed to him, when they will stay in it and engaged in what it is that he's ordained for them to do upon the earth, the Lord has benefits for them. Someone say benefits. And the benefits are not our motivation for serving God. It's not what his hand can do for us that gets us to love him and to serve him. We seek the heart of God and because we seek his heart, his hand is at our disposal. Can you say amen? And so we love God because he has given us salvation, because he created us, because he ordained us, because he is perfect in all of his ways. Every good and perfect gift cometh down from the Father who is above. Every good and perfect gift comes down from him. He is a good father. He loves us that he gave us Jesus. He gave the ultimate sacrifice because of his love for us. And so therefore we love him. We set our love upon him. Can you say amen? But I want you to hear me this morning because you being in the house of God this morning is an indication of your love for God. And I want you to know if you're watching me online, I say this with love. If you're missing church today because of conditions, you need to get saved. You need to get serious. You need to get committed. Because this hour demands for us to be serious about our God. No conditions could deter me from being in the house of God this morning. You know, if I talk about condition, let me play you a video. I hope that they have it ready this morning. But this is what an individual had to do this morning just to get to the house of God. I want them to play it on the count of three. One, two, three. Have a look at this. It got sent on to the ushering group. Man, it blessed my heart this morning. Immediately I forwarded it through to the media team. I said, please have this ready to play. Because I said, this is the level of commitment that is foreign in the body of Christ these days. Most people would have got out of their house and, I'm, and I, I'm, I am throwing shade this morning. But most people would have got out of their house and seen that and be like, well, it's a great day to sleep in, in Jesus' name. Maybe it's a sign from heaven. But the Bible says, do not forsake the gathering of the saints. So I honor every one of you that's in the house of God this morning. And all of you that are watching on, t on TV, I love you. I bless you. But get back to church in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen. And there are benefits. And you, you can get angry with me, but I'm just going to tell you the truth in love in Jesus' name. Because you're not going to, and I'm very grateful, and I must be careful because I'm very grateful to speak to the nations. You know, I'm very, very grateful for that. But you're not going to be able to go to heaven via online streaming. Amen. Amen. I can see I'm going to have some interesting messages sent to me from people watching. And, but it's okay. I'd rather tell you the truth. But everybody say benefits. They are benefits for when you serve God. And the Bible actually goes on to say, so we understand that this is not our motivation for serving God, but nonetheless, this is connected to those, to, uh, or to your experience in serving God when it is that you will serve Him diligently and committed. The Bible says this, and forget not all of His benefits, and He doesn't leave you high and dry. He lets you know what are His benefits. The Bible goes on to say in verse 3, who forgives all our iniquities. Thank God He forgives all of our sins. The Bible then goes on to say, who heals all of our, what, disease. Then it goes on to say, verse 4, who redeems our life from destruction. Then it goes on to say, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Verse 5, who satisfies our mouths with good things. So that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Five benefits for serving God, everybody. Number one, the first benefit of serving God, He forgives your iniquities. Number two, He heals all your diseases. Number three, He redeems your life from destruction. 
Number four, he crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And number five, he satisfies your mouth with good things and causes your youth to be renewed like the eagles. Somebody, that's a word for somebody here today. You're getting younger by the minute in Jesus' name. Come on, can you let your amen be the loudest if that's you? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Forget not all of his benefits. What a privilege it is to serve the Most High God. Amen. It has really been a supernatural July. But I'm looking ahead to what God is about to do in August in the name of Jesus. God is about to do what has never been done before. He's about to cause things to unfold in the life of the faithful, which people said was impossible. And I see that happening for you in Jesus' name. I said, I see that happening for you in Jesus' name. I know I'm going to need to preach above the sound of the dome roof, but I'm going to do it today in the name of Jesus. It's going to be your story. I tell you, get ready for the month of August. There's a word for somebody here today, and, and the Lord spoke to me from Deuteronomy chapter 2. And don't turn there either. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 2, the word of the Lord came to Moses after they had been in the wilderness wandering because of disobedience when they had sent the spies into the promised land. The word of the Lord comes to, eventually comes to Moses and says to him, you've been wandering around this mountain for too long. You've been going around the same spot for far too long. Maybe that sounds like your life today. Maybe it feels like you've been going round and round in the same spot and you haven't seen the delivery of the promises of heaven at the level that you were thinking that you were going to see it. But I thank God for the instruction that came to Moses. God says, I've seen that you've been wandering in the same spot for far too long. But today in the name of Jesus, it's time for you to turn northward. God gave him a divine instruction that would result in him seeing the promises of God come to pass. I came to prophetically declare to somebody here, here today and those watching online you've been going around the same spot around and around and around you're feeling frustrated you're feeling like you're stagnating but the word of the Lord is coming to you today it's time to turn northward it's time to turn into what God has for you I see God speaking to somebody today and letting you know the way forward in the name of Jesus because God is not finished God is just getting started somebody say amen say this from your heart God is not finished God is just getting started now lift your hands and prophesy that to yourself God is not finished with my life God is not finished with my marriage God is not finished with my business God is not finished with my children God is just getting started come on declare it today from the depth of your belly on a chilly morning in East London prophesy it today God is not finished God is just getting started in Jesus name I came ready today. I'm fully loaded in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen? You know, and I didn't plan on shouting today, but when I heard the sound of the dome roof, I was like, well, maybe it's a good day for me to get shouting here. Amen. amen. But I want you to open your Bible and let's get into it this morning. I want you to turn to Romans chapter 5. As you're turning there, I want to strongly admonish all of the men that are here today. I want to encourage you to sign up for the men's breakfast on the 12th of August, as Pastor Bundy was making mention of. Right outside the entrance here today, there's some clipboards. We just want you to put down your name. It doesn't matter how old you are. It does matter if you identify as a man and you're not a man. We only accept biological men, all right? And so please be sure that you are a man, and then you can sign up for it, and we're going to have a special time. It will cost you nothing. A breakfast is included, and it's going to be a special time on the 12th of August. Amen. So even if you're 11 years old, you're a man. You can come in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 5. This morning, there's a word that the Lord has spoken to me that I believe is going to transform your life. That whatever you've been walking in, it's about to change in the name of Jesus. You know, we're coming out of a three-part series speaking about the new creation reality. How many of you were blessed by those three part, that three-part series on the new creation realities and responsibilities? Can I hear you today? Yes. Praise the Lord. That makes me feel good. Romans chapter 5, and I want you to go to verse 6. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. I'm going to read today in the New King James Version. Let me get down. I'm, I'm going to get close to you today. Romans chapter 5. And we're going to start reading in verse 6. Please get your Bibles out, get your notebooks out. Romans chapter 5 verse 6. The Bible says in the New King James Version, For when we were still without strength, 
In due time, Christ died for the godly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. Verse 8, but God demonstrates his own love towards us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. What kind of love is that? That's what I like. I make that statement a few times when I preach. What kind of love is that? What kind of love is this? One who would lay down their lives for people that were still sinners, yet Christ died. The Bible is saying this, maybe some would die for someone who is a little bit righteous, but no one's going to die for someone who's not righteous. And so the scripture goes on to say something interesting. It says this, much more than having now been justified by whose blood? His blood. It's got a capital H because it's not just the blood of anybody. It's not just the blood of a goat or a chicken or a ram, but it's the precious blood of the Lamb of God. His name is Jesus. He died for us. His blood was shed for us. Can you say amen? amen. Are you here this morning? Are you ready to shout this morning? Amen. It's a bit chilly here today, so you need to get ready to take off because the fire of the Lord is coming upon you afresh this morning. Can you say a loud amen? amen. Verse 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the what? That's where we just came out of three weeks of discussing and touching on reconciliation. The fact that we've been reconciled unto God and we become new creations in Christ. We're granted realities but also responsibilities. Then it gets to verse 12. Somebody say, therefore. therefore. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because how many sinned? Because all sinned. For until the law was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned, according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who wants to come. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Now listen carefully, everybody. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense, speaking of Adam and what he did, resulted in justification, or rather was speaking now of Jesus, resulted in justification. Verse 17, for if by the one man's offense, speaking of Adam, death reigned somebody say reigned through the one much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will will reign in will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners because of what Adam did, so also by one man's obedience, what happened? Many will be made. Moreover, I'm reading a lot of scripture this morning. It's the best to start in the Bible, stay in the Bible, and then in the Bible. Opinions don't cause you to grow spiritually. The Word of God does. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's backtrack to verse 17, our foundational scripture for this morning. Believe it or not, I'm not going to be long. 
<laughs> Jeez, like it. Thank you, everybody. Verse 17. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says in verse 17 in the New King James Version, For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more, hallelujah, someone say much more, those, someone say those, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign where? This morning I want to minister to you the topic of reigning in life. Reigning in life. You see many people teach this thing of we will reign in heaven and that's partially true. We will reign in the millennium with Jesus and that's also a partial truth. The Bible distinctively speaks to us here this morning in Romans chapter 5 verse 17 and it says and those you see this morning you have to decide if you fit into that category where it says and those who do receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness let me ask you this morning by a show of hands if you believe that you fit in those those section can you lift your hand here this morning where it says those who receive come on let me keep your hand up right where they are you say, I'm one of those. If that's you this morning, and you say, I've received His abundance of grace, and I've received His gift of righteousness, that means that you fall into the category according to the Word of God as people that are ordained to reign in life. You may put your hands down. Now you need to ask yourself the question, am I reigning in life? Because that's the divine qualification to reign in this life. What does it mean to reign? The word reign speaks of royal rule, like kings. It speaks of one who rules royally from a place of royalty. Does everybody believe that this is God's word? Does everybody believe that this is the word of God? Nothing can be added, nothing can be taken away. Therefore, what it says goes. Well, if that's true and you believe it, the Bible then says you should be reigning in this life. And the question we need to begin to ask ourselves is, if I'm not, what changes do I need to make so that I begin to reign in life? And to reign in life, as I was making mention of, it speaks of royal rule, like a king in a land. A king doesn't beg or plead. A king does what? Commands. Can you say amen? A king decrees and declares and servants begin to follow can you say amen? amen you'll read in the bible in the reign of king darius or in the reign of king this and king that understand the bible says that you as a believer in christ jesus in 2023 you should be reigning on the earth somebody say reign, reign. it speaks of royal rule but what it also speaks of is it speaks of dominion Somebody say dominion. Dominion is what originally was granted unto Adam. You see, this is the work of the cross. Jesus came to restore back unto the believer in 2023 what Adam had lost in the garden. God said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, He told them to be fruitful, multiply, subdue, and have what? Come on, I need you to preach back at me today and have dominion you are called and anointed and given and authorized dominion that means when you go you dominate here's the question you're going to begin to ask yourself am i dominating or am i being dominated these questions we need to ask ourselves because we need to decide in our hearts that if this is the word of god it shall be seen in my life that the Word of God is true, therefore it should be established and seen in my life. I want to make something very clear because I want to highlight this. That this topic of reigning in life is very important to the believer. 
that it is our portion, it is our story, it should be our reality. Reigning in life, here and now. Not just waiting for one day in heaven, but doing it now here on earth. Can you say a better amen? amen. But when it speaks of reigning, it is not speaking about you reigning and dominating over people. It is speaking of you reigning and dominating over the situations and the circumstances of life. Over storms, over sickness, over disease, over illnesses, over poverty. Somebody pray for my voice today in Jesus' name. Over situations, circumstances. That's what God has enabled us to reign over here and now. Not to be masters over people, but masters over matters. That money doesn't master you, you master money. That sickness and disease doesn't master you, you are a master over sickness and disease. Can you say amen? amen. This is the reality, this is what we are ordained to operate here and now. That he said, those that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they shall reign on the earth. Believers should not be complaining. Believers should be reigning. Believers are not anointed with the oil of heaven to be complainers. They are anointed by the oil of heaven to be reigning here and now. To be a person of, of solutions. To be a resource to the generation that, it, that they are called to. To be a people with answers. To emerge as wonders among men. It is imperative for every one of us to recognize that this is the will of God for us. Because you've heard it said many times by many men of God and it bears truth that the will of God is the word of God revealed. Therefore, you can know that it is the will of God for you to reign because he says it in his word. What he says in his word is his will revealed to you. Therefore, his will is not a great mystery. His will is not you sitting there wondering, I don't know what your will is. No, his will is his word revealed to you. And faith can only function where the will of God is known. If the will of God is not discerned in a matter, you will never be able to have faith for it. Faith can only function in your life and in an area and an avenue where the will of God is known. That means that it is, now I begin to understand God has commissioned me, made provision for me in this life in 2023, circumstances notwithstanding, that I should reign in this life. That he has made provision for it. That means it is His will because I can find it in the atmosphere of His Word. Therefore, if I find it in His Word, it must be found in my life. Therefore, because I can find it in the atmosphere of His Word, faith can now function to make it happen. You see, faith grabs a hold of what God has provided for us in redemption and makes it happen in our lives. Faith is the catalyst in the kingdom that makes things happen. Never forget that. Faith is the catalyst in the kingdom that makes things happen. I've often said to you, faith is the currency of the kingdom. We do not purchase things with rands, but faith is what causes things to happen in the life of the believer. The just shall live by how? By grace, huh? by faith. But faith can only operate by what? By love. That means if you have faith, but you have not love, the only person you're fooling is yourself. That means if you call yourself a person of great faith, but you hate your neighbor, the only person that you're fooling is yourself. You know, there's a topic called unforgiveness that the Lord has been ministering to me as of late. I want you to hear me today. If you're here today and you're a believer and you have unforgiveness, you'll go to hell. That's an unpopular message, right? But if you have unforgiveness in your heart today, my prayer would be before the service is over that you would release those people, even if they're not born again. Because if you cannot forgive, you shall not be forgiven. See, Jesus cannot be in your heart with unforgiveness next to him. I don't know if that's a word for somebody this morning. Hear this this morning. God does not want us to cope. God wants us to reign. Here and now, it has been provided for. God says in his word, you have to decide, family, hear me this morning. You have to decide for yourself. Am I gonna believe what the word of God says in its entirety? If I believe John 3, 16, I must believe Romans 5, 17. If for God so loved the world is true, 
then the fact that he tells us if we have received an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that we shall reign on the earth, then it is true and my portion. And it should be seen in your life here and now. Family redemption has made provision for this wonderful reality. The blood of Jesus being shed for you on the cross over 2,000 years ago provided for you to live in victory here and now. Not to be somebody who copes through the battles of life, but somebody who lives as an overcomer, as more than a conqueror, even amidst conflict. Somebody who advances even while adversity is at hand. Someone who overcomes even amidst wonderful obstacles that come to block you. Someone that moves forward even around problems. The giants are in your promised land, family. They are not sitting on the outside of the promised land. They are waiting for you on the other side of the Jordan River. You are not anointed to complain to God about your giants. You are anointed to take every giant out because you are well able to conquer it. For every giant, there's a stone to take him out. For every giant standing in your way, there's a scripture that will take him out. And so we need to begin to discern that this is the reality, this is the life that God has made available to us. Romans 5, 17 in the Amplified Classic. The Bible says, For if because of one man's trespasses, lapse or offense, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, what will they do? They will reign as, they will reign as kings in life through this one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. You no longer have to just cope in the battles of life, but today by the word of God, by the truth of God's word coming into your spirit, you shall be empowered to reign here and now. May it be the story of those five people who said amen. Redemption has made provision for it. That He redeemed us, which also means He forgave our sins and we thank God for Him. We thank God that the blood of Jesus shed, shed on that cross. It paid the price for us so that not only our sin is not actually covered, our sin is washed away. The, the, the blood of animals that were used in the old covenant, it covered sin. The blood of Jesus gets rid of sin. It washes the sin away. For God to never, rem the, the Bible says he casts it into a lake of forgetfulness. As far as the north is from the south, as the east is from the west. But redemption has provided for this life here and now. Jesus is not going to die again so that you can reign in life. He died once for all man. Can you say amen? What does the Bible say in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13? Christ hath. King James, hath, someone say hath. New King James, has, someone say has. In other words, past tense, Christ has redeemed us. Christ hath redeemed us. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter one and verse seven, in him we have redemption. In other words, we have it now, it's provided for us now. That you don't have to wait for Jesus to come and die again. There are some people that are waiting for his fullness, for him to come and die on the cross again. He had done it once, once and for all. When he said it was finished, he actually meant it. And in that redemptive work family, in that wonderful work upon the cross, he provided for a life that reigns here and now. I want you to hear me this morning that you are no longer a beggar. He takes the beggar from the dunghill and puts him amidst where? Princes. You are not beggars. You are not even servants. You are sons and daughters of God who now serve. But not just that. You need to learn this from your heart or rather register it in your spirit and become it. You are royalty. Look at the person next to you and say, how does it feel to sit next to royalty? Come on. Some of you, your posture just changed as you were sitting there. How does it feel? How does it feel to sit next to someone who's a son and daughter of the Most High God? How does it feel to sit next to somebody 
who's seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. How does it feel to sit next to someone who has a father who owns a thousand hills and a cattle on a thousand hills? Oh, I said you're royalty. You're a son and daughter of the Most High God. You see, Jesus dying for you on the cross. This is not to make you glory in your own power, glory in your own thing, not at all. But this is identity. This is who you are in Christ. That's why the world is in an identity crisis. Nobody knows what they are, where they are, how they are. Nobody knows anything. Everyone's confused. Here's the key. Anytime you see confusion, you know the devil's at play. Nobody knows anything anymore, what they are, how they are, what you should call them. Why? They want to destroy the image of God. The, Bible, the devil hates you because you look like God. The Bible says, I'm made in his image and in his likeness. Male and female, he created he them. Amen. They them. Huh? That this. You see, people don't want to talk about that in church. You're at the wrong church, brother. Because as bold as people are about the Antichrist spirit agenda, it's time for the believers to get a, a new backbone and begin to stand up for righteousness and begin to reign in this life upon the earth. That as for me and my house, I don't care about the agenda. I will speak the truth in love. But as for me and my house, I will stand for Jesus. I will stand for the image of God. Make up your mind. You came on a cold morning this morning when everybody else stayed in bed. Let the Word of God begin to effectually work in you this morning and change your story before this month is over in Jesus' name. Oh, shekete, lift your hands now. Thank God for what He did through Jesus. Come on, out of your mouth. Thank Him for the cross. Thank Him for the work of redemption. Jesus, we bless You. Thank You for dying for us, that we might live for You, that it would be more than just a confession at an altar, but a sign of a life laid down before You in Your service. I worship You. I praise You. I give you the glory. Come on, 30 more seconds. Bless his name right now. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. We offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving this morning. Upon this cold morning in Buffalo City, we say thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Revela Look at the scripture. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 through to 6. Revelation chapter 1, 5 through to 6. Never become familiar with the truth that the, the blood of Jesus washed my sin away. Never, never become familiar with what the blood did, but it did more than just forgive your sins. That it conferred upon you royalty. It conferred upon you the reality of being a royal priesthood. It conferred that upon you, that when you came to an altar and bowed your knee before Jesus and said, I give you my life. It was more than just you now feeling good and having your conscience cleared. But at that moment that you give your heart to Jesus, at that moment that you repent of your sin and turn to God and say, Father, the life that I've been living today, I turn from it and I turn to you. That's what true repentance is. Repentance is not just I'm sorry. Repentance is not just I'm caught out. Repentance is the turning away from what you were doing, a heartfelt commitment to following Him. That's what it is. It's repenting, turning to God and following Him. When they asked Peter, brethren, what are we to do? He said, repent and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This message in 2023 is still the message. Repentance is still part of the faith. You know, God spoke to me and He said this, my son, where sin is tolerated, 
Those same people that will tolerate sin, there will be, and it's a strong word, annihilated, put to death, fallen away, fallen by the wayside. If sin is tolerated, you'll eventually be annihilated because sin leads to death. But at the moment that you gave your heart to Jesus, at that moment, your sins were washed clean. A new story was opened up to you in Christ. You are now in Him. In Him I live, I move, I have my being. My real life is hidden with Christ in who? In God. My real life. Until you are born again, you're living a life, but it's not the real life. My real life in God, I'm hidden with Christ in God. I am in Him. And at that moment, royalty is conferred amongst you. But you are not a beggar in this kingdom. It doesn't matter what you look like in the earthly realm. When you will recognize and get revelation of what you are in the spiritual realm, what you are in the natural will quickly begin to follow. How you carry yourself, I've said it before, is a result of how you see yourself through the Bible. Revelation 1 verse 5 to 6, don't just believe me because it's my opinion, but believe it because it's the Bible. The Bible says, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his blood. And what? Read it for yourself. Read it about yourself today in the Bible. And made us, what? Kings and priests to his God and Father. Now go to Revelation 5.10. Revelation 5.10. This is the song of redemption. A song that has been sung in heaven. You see, you'll begin to understand when these scriptures begin to register in your heart, you'll begin to recognize, hold on, I don't have to cope. Hold on, I don't have to make it through the day. Hold on, I'm not watching for the devil. The devil's watching for me. Hold on, I don't have to worry about the next storm, the next situation, but I have the authority of the heavens and the earth conferred upon me that when I'm in a storm, when I'm in a situation, I can be like Jesus and I can say, be still. Isn't it interesting? Jesus never said, our Father who art in heaven. We pray those prayers. We understand. He was teaching us to pray. They said, teacher, teach us how to pray. But in that storm, it wasn't Father. The same way that he called out at Lazarus' grave. I do this so that they will might know, you know, so that they might know. I do this for their benefit. Jesus didn't look to the Father. Jesus took the authority that was delegated unto him, conferred upon him, and said, quiet, be still. There was a phrase that I like and I heard somebody said, you need to hear your pastor's voice, but your mountain and your storm needs to hear your voice. It's not pastor, pray about the situation for me. It's pastor, look what happened. The situation was coming, but I, I was like Jesus in the boat. I stood up and I said, shut up. Devil. Hey, that was not manly. Devil. At least you know I'm meek and humble, amen. Be still. Your storm needs to hear your voice. Your situation needs to hear your voice. Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? Oh Lord, only you know. <clears throat> I can imagine God. Hey, this boy. Can these bones live? Ah, only you know. Start prophesying to the bones. Oh bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. Some of you need to start prophesying to your family. Some of you need to start prophesying to your marriage. Some of you need to start prophesying to your body because it's been plagued by sickness and disease. But oh body, hear the word of the Lord. I shall reign in this life. Sickness, disease, get out now. Father, it's your will. You know his will. 
People have been accrediting the work of the devil to God for far too many years. There are churches in this city and I bless them even though they speak against us from their pulpit. And they've got people busy standing at the altar, busy testifying, God put this cancer on me and I've learned so much. I've learned so many lessons and all the different things that I've experienced. And imagine what God is thinking in heaven right now. Gee, my son, my son went into the cross. In this church, it is my mission to, it is my mission to drive the redemption message into our hearts that we would carry the message of redemption and all that is attached to it and walk in it here and now, that we might emerge as signs and wonders amidst men. Not that I might be glorified by men because nothing is for your glory. Nothing is that people might look at you and stand in awe. They should look at you and glorify your Father. That is the key. Not to take it out of context, but what did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 5? He said that they might see your good works and do what? Give you the praise, give you the glory. No, what? Glorify who? Your Father that is in heaven. That the life of the believer, you are to be a walking billboard for the kingdom of heaven. You should not bring pity and problems onto the kingdom. You should be one that when they look upon you, they look at the Father and give Him the glory and give Him the honor that they can see that you are a people claimed by God and they will stand in awe of you. This is the message of redemption, family. You see, there's people that walk around in humility, afflicted by the things of life. And it's not actually humility, it's a form of pride. Because it's basically a declaration that thanks Jesus for what you did, but it's not enough for this situation. Jesus paid it all, and all to Him I owe. He did everything for me. The work was finished on that cross. Therefore, I will not take what has already been taken by Jesus. Today, to every person under the sound of my voice, any sickness and disease where poverty has been afflicting you, where it's been problem after problem after problem, hear ye the word of the Lord. This far and no further in the name of Jesus, from today as the seed of the word is being driven into your heart, you shall reign in life as kings. Religious folk don't like this kind of message, but it's the Bible. That's why God says in Psalm 115 verse 16, the heaven, even the heavens is what? Is to our God, is the Lord's. But the earth He has given to the, the children of who? Of men. The earth is who? It's the children of men. The heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, the scripture says. But the earth he has given to who? To the children of men. That's why in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, everybody, the Bible says, and he has made us kings and priests unto our God, and we shall reign upon the earth. He has made you a king and a priest unto our God, and you shall reign upon the earth. He has made you kings and priests unto our God, and you shall reign upon the earth. Lift your hands and say it from your heart. He has made me a king and a priest unto my God, and I shall reign on this earth. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. What a powerful word that has been. And if you're watching at home and you're saying, Dini, I want to reign in a, as a king and a daughter of the Most High God, but how can I access that? How can I become part of that? You can't become part of something that you haven't devoted your heart and your life to. And today I want to give you the opportunity to say, this is the life that I used to live, but that's not who I want to be any longer. The word says, it's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives on the inside of me. And if you're watching at home and the word that has been driven forth, and it has penetrated into your heart and the Lord is speaking to you and ministering to you and saying, child, I've been waiting for you. Come to me. I have missed you. And you want to dedicate and declare your life to the Lord today. I want to give you an opportunity and lead you into a salvation prayer. And if you're watching at home and you have a family member and you're like, this is what they need to do, send the link to them so that they can be part of it. And if you're watching at home, say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, today I repent of all of my sin, I ask you to come into my heart 
and change my life. Lord, I give you all that I am and all that I have. I pray that today, that as I come into the knowledge of who you are, that you cleanse me, and that you wash me of all iniquity, that I will be righteous in your eyes. I thank you for your love, and that today marks a turnaround. My life is yours, and everything that I have is yours. And I thank you for your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You are now born again. And if you're watching at home, we want to walk this journey with you. We want to be there for you. So go onto the internet and tap in whatnow.vip and fill in the information over there. We want to walk this journey with you. You're not alone. We're here with you. You can even send us a DM. We want to walk this journey with you. Because you're not meant to live this life alone, but you're meant to live this life with fellow believers. And now we're going to partake of communion as a symbol of as much as you've given your heart to the Lord, this is is a meal of celebration. It's a covenant meal that you can now rightfully partake of. And Pastor Tan is going to lead us in a time of communion. That's right. I want to bring to remembrance yet again what Pastor Nal was ministering about Romans 5 verse 17 that talks about how when we receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, we get to reign in life. And so Father, we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. We thank you wholeheartedly. We receive it. We receive your abundance of grace. Yes, we receive the gift of life and we thank you that we reign in this oh, life Jesus because name. we are made righteous in you. And so we thank you. All sickness, all disease, yes, all Lord. lack, all poverty, all shame is completely broken for our lives, from our lives. And from now on, victory is our story in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Amen. You can partake of both elements of communion right now. Amen and amen. What a time we have had today. And I know for every single one of you, this has been such a blessing. I want to encourage you. You can actually share the link to any person that you know, perhaps was in church and hasn't heard this message. But what a time we have had in the Word of God. I want you to know that this message is for you to walk in the fullness of all that He has for you. On behalf of Dr. Zandre and Jenny, we'll see you tomorrow, 6 p.m. Central African time. him I'm talking with him he has given me a word and when I have a word I have a way I'm walking towards him nothing can kill me nothing can end me nothing can cut my story my story short that's the picture of the walk of redemption he doesn't deny the the, the, the storms and the situations of the life of this life that we live in now it just denies it a place of impact and influence. That I'm under the influence of the Word of God. So therefore, nothing sent from the enemy, nothing sent from the world can stop me or sink me because I'm walking with Jesus. My eyes are on Him. My eyes are on Him. Where are your eyes this morning? It's time to get them back onto Jesus. It's time to get your eyes back on the one who said, come. It's time to get your eyes back on the one that said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Come unto me and I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. You might be sinking today, but I thank God that you're in church and I thank God that you're watching online because Jesus is stretching out his hand towards you. Let me give you these four things and I feel the flow of the Holy Spirit here this morning. I feel the gifts of the Spirit. I feel a tugging in my heart. Four secrets, write them down. That gentleman that's right there. Yes, you sir. You lift your hands quickly right where you are. You're in the double-breasted blaze, I think. Or, yeah. Step out in the aisle over here, if you may. Take a couple of steps forward, right here. Lift your hands right there. The Word of God has been sown into your heart this morning. And the Lord says, that which I have just begun shall surely be completed. Is it a viewe? What's your name? You look very much like somebody I know. 
but in the name of Jesus the word of God is being sown in your heart this morning and the good work shall continue in Jesus name in actual fact I see prophetically God's already removing things that are, that seek to hinder you from the way forward maybe it even be a, a wrong mentality thinking that you're just going to have to be average thinking that you're not going to do anything great for the kingdom of heaven but the word of the Lord comes to you today and you're going to do great things for God and so you should just get ready you should just get ready as you sit here. Let the Holy Ghost begin to speak to you. Let the Holy Ghost begin to speak to you. Because the Lord sees you. Oh, He knows you. And He formed you. And there's a great work to be done. There's much for you to do. Don't let where you come from limit you from where you're going. It's not about where you come from. It's about where you're going. It's not about the bank balance. It's not about the color of your skin. It's not about whether you're male or female. It's about the work that God has put on the inside of you. Oh, and I prophesy to somebody through that young gentleman today. It shall come to preach and it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. I said it shall come to pass. It shall be completed in the name of Jesus. He who starts a good work, he's committed to that good work. So I declare prophetically, it shall come to pass in Jesus' name. I'm about to blow your hair back as how fast I give this to you if it is that we don't begin a flow quicker than I expected but I want to give you the four secrets to reigning in life practical things I believe in practical preaching preaching that doesn't provoke action is a waste of time preaching that doesn't provoke action is supernatural or superficial encouragement I'm not an orator, I'm an oracle. I don't mean that pridefully. That's, you are a mouthpiece of God upon the earth. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Are you ready for it? God bless you, cameraman. Love you, Sylvan. The four secrets to reigning in life. Number one, we've just dealt with it. You need to receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. That's number one. That's the qualification for it. Come here, sir. Stand here. I know that you've been in prayer this whole week. Stand here quickly. Lift your hands to God. God says, I see the petitions of your heart and the work shall be completed. And even a bigger work than you could ever imagine. I'll open doors that people have tried to close in your face. I'll open them because I, I possess the key of David. And I'll close the wrong doors. And I'll open the right doors. For to, to, today, today, Shakaba Aike, an effectual door is being opened unto you. An effectual door. And God has given you everything to overcome. Every adversary. Every adversary. So first things first, everyone say first things first. Is anybody being blessed this morning? Are you glad that you came in like this 90 kilometer wind to church, amen? <laughs> I tell you, I see a prophetic picture as this wind is blowing, where it has felt like, like life has been you just going into the wind after time after time. It feels like every step is a difficulty. I came to declare to somebody prophetically today that in the name of Jesus, the wind is turning today and I see it coming behind you. The wind of God is coming behind you and you shall move in speed in August in Jesus' name. Let your amen be the loudest if you receive it. Come on, shout a living amen. Shout a living amen. People in this church will know when I make declarations like that, I declare them to the faithful. Those who take the word live according to it. God's agenda, God's agenda is time sensitive for the earth. That means that God is accelerating destinies upon the earth because He has work that needs to be done. That's why I can stand you upon this altar. This is not a stage, this is an altar. I stand before you as a living testimony of the acceleration and the speed of heaven. I'm a testimony if you will humble yourself and obey God. He can put you in places that no person thinks you deserve. But it, God doesn't need the help of anybody. He can take a nobody without the help of anybody and turn you into a somebody. 
whether they think you deserve it or not. Whether you have the experience or not, if you will give yourself to this word in whatever sphere of life you are in, if you will cherish this Bible and humble yourself in meekness before the mighty hand of God and obey what He says, there is a wind that begins to blow behind your destiny that what took others 10 years will take you one year. What took others a lifetime will take you five years because we must work the works of Him who has sent us while it is still day because night comes when no man can work. Let me give these to you quickly. Four secrets the practical points to walk in and reigning in life. Number one, receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. They are gifts. The Bible says that we are conferred righteousness because of what Jesus did, did for us. By faith in the finished work of the cross, it becomes our portion. That we might become the righteousness of God of Christ or of God in Christ. But how do you receive it? Let me show you. Lift your hands as an example and say this from your heart. I receive it. Thank you, Lord, for an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. You've received it now. That's how you receive a gift. You don't buy a gift. You receive it. You say, thank you, Lord. Because our righteousness is like dirty rags. I preached on righteousness three weeks ago. There is nothing that we could do, but we receive the finished work of the cross and we are made righteous before God. We have right standing before Him. This reality hinges on, these, on this number one secret, receiving the abundance of grace. Another word is unmerited favor. And the gift of righteousness. That you will not reign in this life because of great works that you have done. But it's by humbling yourself and receiving the work of the cross. Number two. This is so imperative. The second secret for reigning in life. Is that you must possess redemptive truths. Everything that I am ministering to you up until now are what I call redemptive truths. The truths of what redemption has made available to the believer. But you need to not just possess knowledge. You need to possess revelation knowledge. Isaiah 5 verse 13, please put it on the screen for us. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13. We need to not just be people of information, but people that have revelation. Revelation knowledge. Information informs. Revelation transforms. I made a statement that wasn't very popular with people, but I'll make it again. Information will get you a certificate. Revelation will get you a testimony. Now that statement is not saying you shouldn't study. Because if, you, you know, if you're in the kingdom, you should, by all means, you have the mind of Christ. You should be as far from dumb. You should be given to study. But if all you have is information, you will, you'll have info that informs. You'll have certificate, but you'll never have testimony. Revelation grants the believer testimonies in life. May that begin to happen in Jesus' name. The Bible says this, therefore, whose people? My people have gone into captivity. Why? Come on, family, why? Because they have no knowledge. The Holy Ghost said this to me, and if you would take it down, I believe it will impact you. The atmosphere of the Word is the birthing place of revelation. The atmosphere of the Word is the birthing place of revelation. Rhema is the reward for those who have dedicated consistent time to Logos. You will never receive Rhema until you have given yourself to Logos. The atmosphere of this Bible is the birthing place of revelation. People who are people of revelation are people who spend time in the Word of God. Revelation is a reward for diligent seeking, not for casual inquiring. Many people only know their Bible when they face a problem. 
Many people only know their prayer closet when they feel a lump on their body. Many people only know giving when they need a, when they need a harvest. But there is a life that God has called you to live when you can reign upon the earth. Number three, this is so important. Understand your enemy. Understand your enemy. The third secret to reigning in life. Understand your enemy. Understand how he operates. He hasn't changed since Genesis chapter three, verse one. Yet believers are bamboozled by him every day of their lives. But today it ends in Jesus' name. The Bible says, the apostle Paul speaking in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 11, he says this, lest Satan should take advantage of us. That means that he would be superior to us. The apostle Paul wouldn't say this unless it was possible. He says, lest Satan should take an advantage of us. For we are what? We are not ignorant. Ignorance is the weapon of the enemy to gain an advantage over you. And where ignorance is, defeat will always follow. The Bible tells us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And in this context of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul was dealing with the topic of forgiveness. Many people are walking in defeat because they are unforgiving. There are things that the devil operates by. And if you are ignorant of those devices, he will have an advantage over you. You can be seated in heavenly places in the spirit and live a life far below it. But if you will gain knowledge of how he operates, Genesis chapter three, verse one, did God really say? Let me teach you how to respond to that. Yes, he did say. It is written. Tell these rocks to become bread. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. You see, this is how the enemy operates. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. 1 John chapter 2, verse 10. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. These are the three things that we see operate in the life of Eve when he began to speak to her. She saw the fruit, it looked good. She wanted to taste it. It would give her the wisdom. Oh, you will not die, you will be like God. They were as much like God as God is like God. But the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life caused her to be bamboozled by the enemy. And then Adam, Eve gives it to Adam. Adam eats it. God comes in the cool of the day. Where are you? We hiding away. We're naked. Who told you you were naked? No, the woman gave me the apple. Then the woman says, no, the serpent told me to. Then God deals with the serpent, then deals with them. The lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes. You need to understand how your adversary operates because while in the flesh, you will have an adversary on this earth. It is an unbiblical prayer to pray, Father, take all trouble away from me. Take the devil away from me. Take every situation away from me. Because what he would have to do is strike you dead and take you to heaven. Because while you are here on this earth, you will have an adversary. While you are here in this tent, in this body, you will have an adversary that you need to overcome. But if you will be a person that understands how he operates, the lust of the eyes, you begin to put things in place to prevent you falling into those traps. The lust of the eyes, guard your eyes. 
Men, not looking at another woman. Woman, not looking at another man. That's not your husband. Not looking at the things of this world. You know what I've, I've found interesting? Sin is fun for a season. But understand something. It has effects that will last for eternity. And many are willing to trade their eternity for a season of pleasure. There is no woman beautiful enough that's not my wife that I'm willing to trade that for. Hear me today. Hear me today. Before you clap and shout. The lust of your eyes. Money. Put things in place that protects you. Put things in place knowing how the adversary operates. Therefore, I will not fall into that. I guard my eyes. I watch what I'm watching. The pride of life. Father, is my name more important than your name? Is where I'm going more important than who is taking me there? You begin to figure these things out and you begin to recognize how the adversary, your enemy operates and you are not ignorant of him. Therefore, he cannot gain an advantage over you. You begin to recognize your flesh. I put things in place that I will not fall for free. Understand how your enemy operates, family. For we are not ignorant of the devil's devices, lest he gain an advantage over us. Number four. Interesting enough, Pastor Tasha dealt with this. This is what we bring it to a close with this morning. First Timothy chapter four, verse seven to eight. We need to have a spiritual training program. The secrets that will keep you reigning in life. Number four, have a spiritual training program. First Timothy four, seven through to eight. The Bible says, but refuse and avoid irreverent legends, profane and impure and godless fictions mere grandmother's tales and silly myths and express your disapproval of them. But what? Train yourself toward godliness. Keeping yourself what? Spiritually fit. Let me ask you, are you fit in the spirit? You might have muscles in the natural, but your spirit man be looking skinny. Or the opposite, overweight and tired. You need to have a training program, a spiritual training program. Do you have one? Because Paul was speaking to his son Timothy and he said, train yourself towards godliness. Keep yourself spiritually fit for physical training is of some value, useful for a little, but godliness Spiritual training is useful and of value in everything and in every way. For it holds promise for the present life and also for the life which is to come. You need to have a spiritual training program. One that you follow to the letter. You know, religious people, they call dedication works. I know I'm not saved by works, but I'm gonna live a life of consecration. I'm gonna live a life of dedication unto the Lord. Reading the Bible every day for me is not because it's a tradition, not because I'm religious, but because I'm consecrated, because I'm committed unto God, because He saved me from a life of depression. He saved me from a life of suicide. He saved me from a life of being lost and having no purpose. He saved me from a life of alcohol. He saved me from a life of not knowing what I was on this earth to do. Therefore, I give Him everything. And I'm committed, as committed as I once was, not anymore as I'm sure you can see, the fruit always tells, to a natural 
physical training program. But in the spirit, if you could see my spirit man, Jesus. And the Lord gave me this picture. He said, look at my people in the early church. The Bible says in Acts chapter 242, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine, in fellowship, in breaking of bread, and in prayers. That's a spiritual training program. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine, in fellowship, in breaking of bread, and in prayers. Go if you can for me, Acts chapter 246. Put it on the screen for us, please. Hallelujah. A spiritual training program. Godliness is a path and a journey that you walk on. And you pursue it with everything in your heart. Some people think I can never be like this pastor. Or I can never be like this man or this woman of God. All that those people did, they've got the same Lord and Savior that you have. They serve the same God, have the same Bible. They have the same resources at their disposal. Yet they were committed when you were sleeping. Yet when you were eating, they were fasting. When you were crying, they were praising. When you were storing, they were sowing. Many have left prosperity to this thing of luck and mere grace of election. But it's not. It's the engagement of godly principles. God's not a respecter of people, but He's a respecter of His principles. He's a respecter of His word. You fulfill what they fulfill, you will have what they have. So it's not a thing that I'm just, I can never be like that. It's engaging a spiritual training program. This is the talk that we need to have. This is the life that we need to have. That as I begin to pursue God, it's not a thing of, I have to attain this so that He will love me. He loves me. You can never be more righteous than what you are right now. As righteous as you are right now. That's, that's, that's it. You are righteous before God. But as I begin to pursue God, I begin to walk with Him. Every day I wake up, mandole siaka. As I get out of bed, you can ask my wife this morning, wake up, no electricity, in the shower, I'm singing. Yeshu, hey. That's why they don't let me sing there. Ah, lekete ese. Ask my wife, ask my daughter. I walk out of the bathroom, my, my daughter's like looking like, she knows. Shekala bahase kieke teresia katonde. I know that I'm training my daughter the right way because I was videoing her the other day and I said, Mila, what do you have to say to the people watching you right now? She says, Fire of the Holy Ghost. I said, Thank you, Lord. I wake up in the, and I'm not the perfect example, but I wake up in the morning. I don't feel like praying, I don't feel like it at all. I get in the shower. Shabreketi askataya. Rekete, why? I'm in a spiritual training program. Jikete le kabwa rotoska. Mashandia, Father, how is this church going to grow in small groups? How can I help Edward in the dream teams? How can I help Faith Cares? What can I do? What can I, where is there an opening for faith missions that you could give me to be able to help them? Shakandia skolovo hikata. How is the church going to grow into this place of 11,000 seats? Jikete le kese kieke. God begins to speak. God begins to give, give ideas. God begins to show you scripture. Rhema begins to come. I'm in the shower. I'm not, in the, I'm not studying. You see, believers who mock tongues, it's the dumbest thing you could ever do because you operate at the potential mark of mere human people. But when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, in the natural, they're like, you sound like a fool. But in the spirit, demons are trembling. Demons are moving out of your way. God begins to speak to you. I'm hitting my bullseye every single time when I pray. Oh, Father, if it be thy will, just do whatever you want to do, Jesus. If their prayers, and this is not to mock, I want to illustrate. So please hear my heart. If their darts were prayers, I can just think of God 
But you just get into the you get into the Holy Ghost. Mandia, the Bible says, pray in the Spirit at all times. Jikaba ikate lesia mamaya. For our, our understanding is unfruitful. But one begins to pray in us and begins to pray through us. He intercedes for us. He begins to pray. And we begin to pray the perfect will of the Father. Not from my head, but from my heart. Rivers of living water begins to flow. Rikete sketi amamaya. Jikete lekese ketende. And I'm praying the perfect will of God. Praying what He needs me to pray. Hitting my bullseye every time. And I'm being edified at the same time. Try be depressed. And pray in the Holy Ghost. When you wake up and you feel, because I don't mock depression. I know what that thing's like. That spirit of heaviness tries to come on you. All you do is you just say, Sandore kiese levendia. Shekaya kayaya yayaya. Barote le sike telende. Aso bahaya kataya. Then you take your, your, your tongues and you begin to bless the Lord. I praise you for all your wonderful deeds. All of your ways are perfect. You are great and mighty. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Thank you for the blood of your son. Thank you for making me a king and a priest unto your God. Thank you that I am yours and that you are mine. Thank you that I can approach your, your throne of grace with boldness. Likandeles. All of a sardine, depression cannot sit on you. Be anxious. What for what? Be anxious for how many things did God say? How many things? Pastor, I'm dealing with anxiety. What wisdom do you have for me? My daughter, be anxious for nothing. Amen. But, but uh -huh. what does God say? Be anxious for how many things? Nothing. Nothing. But, but, highlight. Nothing. Father, I bless you. Anxiety. Hambagache. Jikala. Teta is closer. Jekala basia katuska. Jekete lebendia basonda. Lika bahaya sikete, joba asi eleke mohonde. Lika, pray right where you are right now. Zeke, you shall not be sad any longer, for the oil of gladness is beginning to flow in this place, and you shall not fall by the wayside. You shall not be down and cast out any longer, for the just shall live by faith. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And He shall begin to work in and through you. Mahaya katala kaskota. Pray right where you are. Shekete lekese lekete. Oh yes, I shall not be sad. I shall be glad. For the Lord sits in the heavens and laughs at the plots of the wicked. That whatever the enemy has planned for me, it shall end in failure. Whatever the devil has planned for my family, whatever ditch is being dug even right now, it shall not prosper over me. It shall not, it shall not prevail over me. He shall not gain an advantage over me. Oh, Kataya, pray. You're sitting in your chair thinking, what church am I in today? You're in the real church of Jesus Christ. Barataliyama masalia. Eke ese mohoya, bali kete breki sekete, jiba raba soto nenende, ikere sola baia, jamaha, jamaha, jamaha. Stand to your feet, jamaha, jamaha. Stretch out your hand to jahale. That's right. There's a new oil coming upon you this morning. Continue to pray, everybody. A new oil is coming upon you this morning. Oh, there's much still to do. Don't even think about slowing down. Don't even think about slowing down. For there's much more that I have for you, says the Lord. There's much more that's in store, much more that is to, still to take place, and it shall happen at the right time, says the Lord. Oh, it shall happen. Take a step forward. It shall happen. It shall happen. Lift your hands. It shall happen. It shall happen. It shall happen, says the Lord. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Mahaya, Soloko, Iende, Zekete, Zekete. Take a step forward and lift your hands. Yes. 
the, yes, yes, that's right. That's right. These hands are anointed for great wealth, says the Lord. And so may the Lord bring you more. May the Lord bring you more. May the Lord bring you more. I see bigger vehicles coming your way. <laughs> oh, I see vehicles in the name of Jesus. Lots of wheels. What a weird word of knowledge. Am I on it? I hear it today in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bring it to you. May the Lord, may the Lord bring it to you in Jesus' name. And may He uproot the wrong people that might be around you. And may He begin to plant the right voices in the name of Jesus. As I lay my hands upon you this morning, oh, you're going to see it in the name of Jesus. You're going to see it in the name of Jesus. You're going to see it in the name of Jesus. You're going to see it in the name of Jesus. Oh, le kesekia kataya ya Bring him here, quickly. Bring him here. This is when everyone gets nervous, eh? Bahaya katala bahaya. Sabale ketele kesele. Thank you, Lord. I pray that a new strength would come upon you today. I pray that a, quickly. I pray that a new strength would come upon you today. I lay my hands upon you. Your youth is renewed in Jesus' name. Your youth is renewed. Don't be scared to build, says the Lord. Ah, there's much that the Lord has for you to do still. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged, for the Lord doesn't give up. The Lord doesn't give up. There's much for you to do. Some of them you need to lay hands a bit hard on. Shabahaya katala. Just pray. Just pray. Just pray. Just pray. As you've been praying in this place, the Lord will begin to show you mighty things that are to come. He'll begin to show you. Get Kuselo for me quickly, please. Kuselo. Mashali Abahaya. Mashali Abahaya. I feel the flow of the Holy Ghost. I said, I feel the flow of the Holy Ghost. Oh, la bahan de lekia salava vando. Kere desiende. Kere desiende. Mande le vesi katala vavaya. Mande le veti ababahaya. Mande le veti ababahaya. Mande le veti ababahaya. Come on, pray. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come here, Ronan. Lift your hand, sir. Pastor Ron, are you okay if I? I declare unto you the hand of the Lord is on your life. I declare unto you that the same, you know, I don't make, you not like me, but the hand of God is on you. May me declaring this to you be a confirmation to you. Don't think it. Don't guess if it's there. The hand of God is on your life for such a time as this. I tell you, sir, it's on you strong. And it's not about feeling it. It's not about, you know, what working all these things out. God's going to make it happen in the name of Jesus. All you got to do, sir, is follow his plan. Is follow his plan. Is follow his plan. <laughs> Put your one hand here. In the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you would use him. I pray that you would put speed on his destiny as well. That he would move in speed in Jesus' name. That he'll do just what you've called him to. <laughs> oh man, it's strong on you, sir. Let's receive it. God's going to begin to show you what to do. God's going to begin to show you the way forward. And you not knowing, know, you're not knowing the next five years or what the next step is when everybody else is working it out. The Lord says, that's because I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you what to do. Don't make your own plans. Make the plans I tell you to make. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I feel it strong on you today, sir. Come here, sir. Come here. Let's lift your hands. There's a big vision that the Lord is going to begin to birth in you. For maybe it is that a taste has come to you, but there's a bigger vision that's at play. And your time here and now God is going to begin to put things in your heart. This time here and now is your sowing seeds for your destiny. For there are bigger things that are yet to come. I see big events, big things that you will make catering for. Big sound, big lights, big all of these things. And the Lord says, <laughs> I'll begin to speak to you, sir. I'll begin to show you what is to come. I'll begin to show you what is to come. I'll begin to show you what is to come. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Bring her here. Just lift your hands. As you do, the power of God comes upon you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. The call is strong and it shall not be hindered. It shall not stagnate. 
I feel the flow of the Holy Spirit. If you need to leave, you're more than welcome, but I'm not going to stop just yet. The hand of the Lord, come here. The hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord. As you lift your hand, God's power begins to flow from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus. Don't pray for a second. Just be silent right where you are. Put your one hand on your belly. And I tell you, the Lord is touching you now. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, let Him speak to you. 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 Come here, Auntie Loretta. Step into the aisle over here. Oh, I bless you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. You'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land that you're living in, in the name of Jesus. Your body is strengthened today in every area. As you step back into the house of God, even here today, His power is flowing through you. His power is flowing through you. His power is flowing through you. Hallelujah. His power, come, both of you, quickly. His power, His power. Hallelujah. Hold hands, lift your hands. Oh, the vision, the vision. There's a vision at hand. There's a vision at hand. But stop fighting the vision. Stop fighting the vision. Just write it down. And the Lord will help you and give you the next steps. He'll help you and give you the next steps. He'll help you and give you the next steps. Hallelujah. Come see now. You okay to stay a few minutes, everybody? Stand right here. As I lay my hands upon you, I impart unto you the grace of speed in Jesus' name. And I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever the devil do, is trying to do and might be ordering even right now to try and stop you from pursuing what God has for you. I pray in the name of Jesus that as my hands go upon your head, it will be confirmed in your heart that which he has called for you to do and the mission that's at hand and that he will uproot all that the devil has planned in the name of Jesus. Father, as my hands are upon him this morning, let the grace for speed come upon him in the name of Jesus. May he move in speed in Jesus' name. May he move in speed in Jesus' name. In his call and in his destiny. Come Shiloh, stand here quickly. The gifts of the Holy Ghost will begin to operate in your ministry. But the Lord says it will take your faith to step out in it. Don't worry about being wrong. What if you say this? What if you say that? Or any of those things. But if you'll step out, the Lord will perform it in Jesus' name. Just step out. 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 Just lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands. Turn the keys louder, please. Bring the whole parking team, Asheville, all the way to all the parking guys. Come. The anointing is on all of you. Come quickly. Emil, you can also stand there, good sir. Put Emil on the end. All of you stand next to each other, hold hands. 
I was watching all of you as you were sitting there. The fire of God is coming upon you. Lift your hands together. The fire. The fire. That's it. That's it. The fire. The fire. It's on you, Edward. The fire of God. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. As you are serving people downstairs, God says as you've refreshed others, I will refresh you this morning. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire. The fire of God. I tell you, I have a word for you all by yourself. Where you are is not where you're always going to be. For the Lord sees your faithfulness and where you come from will never be a limitation of where God's going to take you to. And I tell you, you might be in a season where you walk, but there will come times where you will drive in the name of Jesus Christ. As you serve God, hear me very carefully, because this is not just like to, to give like some superficial hope. As you serve God and faithfully read His Word and believe Him and pray and stay consistent in coming to this church, I tell you, you're going to see your dreams fulfilled in Jesus' name. You're going to see your dreams fulfilled and your family won't be able to believe it. I break any hold over your life today in the name of Jesus Christ. The fire of God touch you in Jesus' name. The fire of God. The fire. The fire. Amos upon you, sir. Much to do. KK. <laughs> Jesus. Touch him. Just lift your hands one more time, everybody. I worship you, Almighty God. 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 There is nobody that is like you in all the earth. There is nobody that is like you in all the earth. You're a wonderful God. A wonderful God. A wonderful God. You're here today. You need healing in your body. There's a sickness that's in your body now. I'm not going to call you to the front. You're here today and there's a sickness in your body. Stand to your feet right now wherever you are. Stand to your feet wherever you are. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, I speak to every one of your bodies now. And I command them to be made whole. In Jesus' name. Every sickness goes today. All disease leaves you today. In the name of Jesus. In your mind, in your heart, I hear the liver, in the pancreas, in any parts of your body. Respiratory issues goes today in Jesus' name. Blood issues goes today in Jesus' name. Any sickness, any disease, today as your hands are raised, your body is touched from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. As I stretch my hands to you today, the hand of God is touching you now. In the name of Jesus, those have been losing their eyesight, you shall not go blind in Jesus' name. You shall have 20-20 vision. Deafness, I curse you today in Jesus' name. And your ears will hear clearly in Jesus' name. Any parts of the limbs that have not been working, issues in the legs, issues in the joints, whatever. Today in the name of Jesus, God's power is flowing through you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Just say it right where you are now, I receive it, Jesus. Thank you for touching me. In Jesus' name, amen. Take your seat. You're here today. You're not born again. Your life is not right with Jesus. I'm almost certain, I might be wrong, if you come to church on a day like this in 90 kilometer wind, chances are you're saved. But I'm going to ask the question in case somebody grabbed you by the ear and ripped you into this house today. Oh God, by His goodness, drew you here, which is very possible. So not to nullify it, I must give an opportunity. Today, if you would like to make your life right with Jesus, there is sin in your life, and I want you to know something. Where sin is tolerated, death will be experienced. But thank God Jesus came to set us free. Maybe your life is not in order. 
Maybe you are far from God. You can't even say today that I know that I will go to heaven. I want you to know that this call is for you today. I ask you this question. Are you born again? Not are you a good person. Are you born again? Not do you do good works and give money to the poor and give clothes to people. I ask you this question. Are you born again? Because good is not good enough. Good people are dying and going to hell every day. In fact, there's a good person that wouldn't have woken up this morning because they don't know Jesus or never gave their life to Him. They're in hell today. This thing that we preach is not a joke. And so I ask this question today before I bring this time to an end. If you don't know Jesus and you'd like to commit your life to Him, you'd like to repent of sin and turn to God and live this life of reigning here on the earth as kings and priests unto our God. All that I want you to do is on the count of three, I want you to lift your right hand as an indication that I'm praying for somebody today. On the count of three, just lift your right hand up. One, two, three. Quickly lift your right hand up if that's you. God bless you, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Stand to your feet right where you are as your hand is lifted. Stand to your feet. If you lifted your hand, altar workers, quickly. I want you to go stand by each one of these people. I'm not gonna bring them to the altar. I want them to stand right where they are. Praise the Lord. My brother, you with your hand lifted, lift your other hand as well to receive this from Jesus. The Lord's going to send you the right people to be around you in Jesus' name. And the Lord's going to remove the wrong people. And as you are giving your heart to Jesus, I already declare unto you today that there's a great calling on your life. The hand of God is on your life. What's your name? Dante. It's a cool name. The hand of God is on you. And today as you make right with Jesus, God's going to begin to teach you to hear His voice. God's going to begin to show you what to do and where to go. There's a peculiar set of skills that the Lord has granted unto you. Some of them you might know now, but the Lord will begin to grant them to you and begin to show you them as you begin to walk with Him. My prayer is that your dedication today will stick and that you'll stay committed to Jesus. Because if you will, where you are today, how old are you? 20? Where you are today, in the space of the next five years, you'll look back and it'll, it'll be like in your, in your mind's eye, it's impossible. Where do you come from? You're from East London. Really? How did you end up in this church? Invited? Really? Faith. Praise the Lord, man. As your hands are lifted, I declare to you in Jesus' name. You're going to pray the prayer now, but I tell you ahead of time, get ready for the next five years. If you'll commit to following Jesus, He'll make your way prosperous and He'll give you good success in the name of Jesus. I pray that you receive it, sir. Everybody that's standing wherever you are as you have an altar, altar worker with you. Our whole church today is going to pray with you. Ushers, I want you to be ready to hand out communion with speed as we end today. And I'm going to ask that nobody leaves because me and my wife have a very important announcement to make that we want all of you to know. So I want ushers to get ready with the communion. Everybody that's giving their heart to Jesus today, lift both your hands to Him and the altar worker standing next to you. Altar worker next to you. Don't be scared of them. They're there to help you. Church, stretch your hands to these precious people. They're in all different directions, so do your best. The people that are in church there, you are basically the core of this church. You're what we call the remnant. I want you to pray this prayer after me today if you're standing wherever you are, and I want you to say this from your heart. Say, Jesus. Please don't hand out the elements yet, ushers. Just wait until we've prayed the prayer. Say this with me. Jesus, I confess that I've sinned against you. But today, I repent of all my sin. Jesus, I turn to you. I confess that you are my Lord and my Savior. I believe in my heart that Jesus died for me. And three days later, you raised him from the dead. I receive you into my heart. Wash me. Cleanse me, change me in Jesus' name. Today, I am new. The old is gone. Behold, all has become new in Jesus' name. And everyone says, amen and amen. Give Jesus some praise, Faith Church, wherever you are. I'm gonna ask my lovely wife to come to the front. As the ushers hand out the elements, I'm going to ask that nobody leaves because I have, we have an announcement we want to give you. It's 10 to 12. We've done good. Amen. Was anybody blessed this morning? 
I really pray that you were. This is the reality that God has called us to. I want to ask you to get the elements and I want you to get ready to partake. Leroy, will you get forte as well, please? And um, I want to challenge you as well, church. Can we keep those curtains closed at the back there, please? I want to challenge you, church, that as we are stepping into the month of August, I want to challenge you to join us for midday prayer, Tuesdays through to Friday. We are praying for one hour, Tuesday through to Friday. I want to challenge you. There's so many new things that we're going to be doing, and one of them that we're actually going to be doing in the future, and I'm going to probably speak about it next week, is a new course that we're going to be introducing. And it's going to be all about marriage. And it's, going to, it's not just going to be for married couples, but it's going to be preparing us for marriages. And if you're married, it's going to be helping you, teaching you, deconstructing certain things or breaking down certain things and reconstructing the right things in your life so that we can have thriving marriages. And it's going to be for single people as well so that you can be prepared accordingly for marriage because divorce is not an option in the kingdom of God. We understand there's certain things, but we're not talking about that. When you made a covenant before God, you made a covenant, not just a decision. Amen? And so it's going to be a, a, a precious time, but I want you to get the elements wherever you are. And if you have the elements, I want you to hold them in your hand. And as we finish, all of you that are with us on faith now, as we partake, it's going to bring it to a close with all of you online with us. And we love you. And thank you for being with us. But I want you to hold the elements in your hand today. Hold the bread in your one hand and the cup in the other. And let's pray. Father, we thank you today for the bread and we thank you for the cup. The bread that represents your body and the cup that represents your blood. As we partake of it today, we do this in remembrance of what you have done for us. We're so grateful for the work of Calvary. Thank you that we can walk in this reality here and now. We bless you today. We praise you for you are wonderful. And as we partake, we remember and secondly, we proclaim that the return of Jesus is at hand. We say, come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, you may partake of the bread and you, might, you may partake of the cup. God bless all of you that are with us on faith now. We love you so much. And we'll see you next week in Jesus' name.